This is Evangelist Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning into our podcast, or maybe you're listening to us on YouTube, or maybe on my website at henrywalker.org. We want to continue in this eight days of blessings from the Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah. And today's the second day, and as I mentioned, there's miracles every day, and today he wants to bring a miracle into your life, and that's healing through his blood. But before we get into the message, let's go to the Father of Prayer. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people. Use me for your glory. Help people open up their hearts and receive what you have to, to say today, Father. And we give you all the glory in the name of Yeshua. Go with me to 1 Kings chapter 9, just to review a little bit about the Feast of Dedication, about Hanukkah. In 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 3, this is after Solomon had dedicated the temple, and he had asked the Father to have his, his eyes, his heart, and his name there forever in the temple. Chapter 9, verse 3, And Yahweh said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So he answered that prayer in chapter 10 of John. John chapter 10. And incidentally, I use Yahweh because 7,000 times in the Old Testament, instead of using Yahweh, they put Lord capitalized. The King James people did. I always like to say the King Germs, because they really mess things up for the most part. Uh, so 7,000 times it should have been translated Yahweh as his name. And Lord, Lord is derivative from Baal, and Baal, Zebub, is the Lord of the flies. You can look up in the uh, Bible dictionary the connection between Lord and, and Baal. So his name is Yahweh, and as I mentioned, Yahweh is an action verb. In Genesis chapter 1, he used the word Elohim. Elohim said, let there be light, and that's, uh, that's the Father and all his attributes majestic, so, so many attributes. But all that means nothing to us unless, like in chapter 2 of Genesis, he says, Yahweh, Elohim. That means not only do I have the power, but I'm using that power for my creation. And it said in chapter 2 that Yahweh, Elohim, form man out of the dust of the earth. So Yahweh is an action verb, it's not a noun. And when you surrender everything to the Father, turn your flesh over to the Father, so you can mortify the deeds of your flesh, conform us to the image of Yeshua, bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives, then He actively moves on your behalf when you just call upon His name, Yahweh. But in John chapter 10, that request that Solomon had about the Father's name, eyes, and heart always being the temple, the Father said it, it always will be perpetually. In John chapter 10, verse 22, and it was at Jerusalem the Feast of Dedication. There's that Feast of Dedication. Or Hanukkah. Hanukkah sounds so Jewish, but... Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew. And Yeshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. He walked in the temple. So here's the Father's name, eyes and heart, walking in the temple. And then came the Jews round about him and said to them, How long do you make us to doubt? If you be the Messiah, tell us. And here he's standing right in Solomon's porch, right in Solomon's temple, fulfillment of that prophecy by, the, by Yahweh. And they're still saying, Show us where to be the Messiah. Here's the Father's eyes, heart, and name right in the temple. In verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, Yeshua said. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And then he took up stones to stone him, because he was saying he's the Father. And then he said in verse 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. As I mentioned on a, on a couple of occasions, it's like an iceberg in the ocean. The ocean's in the iceberg and the iceberg's in the ocean, but the iceberg gives a form to the ocean. The Father is invisible. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.16, that the Father was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, received up into glory. It's all about Yeshua. Yeshua said, the Father in me does the works. Philip said, show us the Father. He said, haven't I been a long time with you? When you see me, you've seen the Father. It's just like people say, well, Yeshua is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Well, the Father's the Spirit doesn't have a left or a right hand. There's one throne, Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. And Yeshua sitting on the throne. Yeshua said in Luke twenty-two sixty-nine, 
Hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power of the Father. We get the term right hand man. It's a power position. It's a Jewish term. A power, the power position. That's what the Feast of Dedication is all about. About Solomon uh, dedicating the temple. The Father saying, I'm going to put my name, my heart, my eyes there perpetually. And here Yeshua fulfilled that. It's the one feast where he actively says, I'm the Father. Manifest in the flesh. We also talked about how the Maccabees, the, they defeated the Syrians when they came into Jerusalem, desecrated the temple. The Maccabees wiped them out after three years of fighting. They only had enough oil in the temple for one, one day, but it burned eight days. The miracle. This is a time of special miracles. Today we want to talk about that miracle, how you can receive your healing through the blood of Yeshua. If you turn with me to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20. I have a message on my website about the power of the blood. I also did a podcast about the power of the blood. And you may want to go back to review it. But what he wants to do today is bring about your healing through the blood of Yeshua, which is the Father's blood. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of the Father, which has purchased with his own blood. Yeshua had no earthly father. His blood is from the heavenly father. So it's the father's blood. That's what makes it so powerful. And I talked in my message about the power of blood, about when Yeshua was going up that hill to die for us, his blood was protecting all those people around him from being killed. His blood fell on the the garments that they gambled over, protected them. When people came right to where he was hanging, the blood protected them. We also know the rich man provided the tomb, and that blood was on that rich man's tomb from Yeshua. It could almost guarantee he became richer and richer and richer. The blood is just so powerful. We talked about in that message, different beliefs about the blood from the Word. It really helps with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So many times I wanted people to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. I just had them say the blood, the blood, the blood of Yah, the blood of Yeshua. And sure enough, it, it breaks through. And we want to talk about the healing later on, but it can bring spiritual health, mental health, and financial health. You can use it as an offensive weapon. If you're going to, to visit somebody, to minister to somebody, you can put the word and say, I apply the blood of Yeshua over that whole meeting as an offensive weapon. You can, you, you can attack with the, the devil's in somebody's life with the power of the blood, using the blood. The first act of worship in the Word is when Abel offered a burnt offering. And covering ourselves with the blood can bring us into a high level of worship. The original Passover, the blood of a lamb, rescued the, the whole nation at one time. How much more can the blood of Yeshua? And then on the Day of Atonement, once a year, the high priest would go into the high holy place, put the blood of an animal on the mercy seat, and would atone for the sins for the prior year. And that blood pointed to the blood of, of Yeshua, which not only atoned for sins for the prior year, but all our sins. Everybody's sins, prior, now, and in the future. And so the blood that the offered with the animal is a type of what Yeshua did. And also to use that blood to cleanse the tabernacle. And that blood can, can cleanse our lives. We apply the blood to every aspect of our lives to clean us. And as I mentioned, when we turn our flesh over to the, the spirit of the Father, allow him to mortify the deeds of our flesh, conform us to the image of Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives. That blood cleanses us and cleanses us. So the main purpose for the infilling of the Spirit of the Father is to make us holy. That's why his manifestation is called the Holy Spirit. And he said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, that you shall become witnesses unto me unto Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. The Spirit of the Father is inside of us, cleansing us, taking the junk out of our lives, and conforming us into the image of Yeshua. It's a sanctification process. And Philippians 3 verse 20 says, We are saved through the sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth. And what I'm telling you today is truth. The blood is powerful. It's not just a defensive weapon, but it's an offensive weapon. It says in Zechariah 9 verse 11, you can write it down, Zechariah 9 verse 11, that... The blood of his covenant sends forth prisoners out of the pit. It can free people up. Joel chapter 2 verse 30 says that in the last days there would be blood, fire, and smoke before the coming of Yeshua. 
So we can see that like, covering us with the blood of Yeshua can bring the fire of the Holy Spirit into our lives in such a tremendous way. The blood also en enhances our communion with the Father. The blood sanctifies and sets us apart from all others who are not protected. It's like he, we hide in a secret place with him because of the blood. In the last days, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 19 to 20, Revelation 14, verse 19 to 20, it says the blood out of the winepress of the Father destroys all the enemies of Yahweh during the tribulation. And before every battle, they offered up uh, uh, an, a lamb, an animal. The blood protected them in, in the battle. The blood gave them the victory. If you're going into the enemy's territory, you can plead the blood. It's powerful. And actually in Leviticus 8, verse 23, Leviticus 8, verse 23, Aaron and his sons were anointed by Moses for ministry, and Moses had a sprinkle of blood on the tip of their right ear, their right thumb, and upon the big toe of their right foot. That was part of the ministry preparation. So anybody's in the ministry, the blood needs to be applied to their tip of their right ear, to the right thumb, big toe of the right foot. The tip of the right ear is to hear him precisely. The right thumb is to, for power, more power. And the big toe is for stability. That's important preparation for anybody going into the ministry. And so remember in the original Passover in Egypt, that blood was applied to each household. It protected a whole household. So with that in mind, we want to look at some of the healings that Yeshua did in, in the Word and see how the blood was right there among them in Yeshua. The blood is just so powerful. When Yeshua touched them or He spoke about them, spoke to them, the blood was just healing. In Yeshua is the Father's blood. You go with me to uh, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that they went into a city called Naim. Naim. And many of his disciples went with him, and many people, talk about Yeshua. When it came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And many people of the city were with her. And when Yeshua saw her, he had compassion on her and said to weep not. And he came and touched the beer. Here's the blood, the Father's blood coming towards that beer. And they ate that bear him, and they that bear him stood still. He said, Young man, I said unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. It's very important that he began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified the Father, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us. That's the boy who was raised from the dead, he spoke great powerful words from the Father, and that Yahweh had visited his people. So here, they obviously saw that, hey, this person has to be the Father. Look what he did. He just touched the beer, the funeral beer, and the boy came back from the dead. And now the boy spoke these words, these prophetic words, because the blood was on the scene to Yeshua. And Matthew chapter 9, he wants you to get ready for your healing in just a little while. Through the blood. There's a, a true story about a, a lady who was taking her, she boiled some water and she's carrying a, a baby in one arm up the stairs and with the boiling, with the boiling water and it, it, she tripped and, and water went on her, her arm and it was really got red and everything and she pleaded the blood, pleaded the blood, pleaded the blood over and over by faith and it just, it just healed right up. Blood is so powerful. You need to apply it to your, so many aspects of your life, your finances, any meetings you're going to have, anything you're concerned about. Uh, apply the blood to memories of the past, things that happened in the past, to be covered by the blood. And now we want to talk tonight, especially about applying that blood to your body, physically, spiritually, mentally, and financially, to bring wholeness, healing. But in Matthew chapter 9, Verse 20, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years. Twelve means completion. Twelve means it's over. Came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. And she would turn back. And when he saw it, he said, Daughter, he called her daughter now. This sure sounds like a father. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was whole from that, that hour. See, she had an issue of blood, but here comes the Father's blood through Yeshua, healing her bloodstream, coming into her bloodstream and, and healing 
whatever the problem was in the blood certain in the body. His blood is available for you today, but you can't apply the blood unless you turn everything over to Him, unless you submit to Him, turn your flesh over to Him so He can mortify the deeds of your flesh, conform you to the image of Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's in Galatians 5, verse 22 to 26. It's very important that you receive your healing today. But I'm just giving you a background about the blood. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 10, And behold, there was a man which had his hand with it. And he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? But how much better... How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore is it, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Then he said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth and was restored whole, like as the other. That's what you got to do today. Stretch forth the issue that's affecting your body, your life, and let the blood of Yeshua just heal and wipe out the past memories, uh, touch your finances. But before he does, he wants all of you. And what a trade. The Bible says that Yeshua became sin, that we might become the righteousness of the Father. What a trade. And when you surrender everything to Him, everything that He has is at your disposal to help you when needed. And you're always on His mind, but you've got to surrender everything to Him. You can't hold anybody or anything back. And especially during the season, be very careful, as I mentioned, just about every podcast. Be, look at, at the last podcast I, I mentioned about the feast dedication versus Christmas. Look at the origin of Christmas. Look how Yeshua was born on Passover, died on Passover. It's like number one or number two message on my message page at henrywalker.org. When was Yeshua born? When did he die? When did he rise? He was born on Passover, died on Passover. Read my messages. And don't celebrate the, these holidays like Christmas, December 25th, October 31st, and January 1st are satanic high holy days where he wants to abduct and kill children. You don't need to bring Satan into your house with that stuff. And read my message on Christmas and Easter and all that. It's just, you've got to keep that stuff out of your house. And at any time of year, don't drink any beer, wine, and alcohol. It's really spirits coming into your body, into your house, into your life. When you do these things, these holidays and this stuff that you might be taking, Satan's right in the house with you, sitting on the couch, watching TV, eating with you. And the fact is he has a legal right to be there because... You've opened the door. Don't give place to the devil. Ephesians 4.27 he, he will work on you and your family little by little so you don't know it's him. Eventually your family will be deteriorated because of, of, of he just is ruining your whole house, ruining your lives. You've got to be very careful. You can stop it right now. Repent, get rid of it. Just because it, it started with Constantine in the 4th century and Constantine, it was a feast that the pagans had uh, Saturnalia, they had it from December 17th to the 25th, and said, hey, not only will we we'll have that in to the Christianity, but December 25th will make it to be the birth of Yeshua, which is not even in the Word. So, there's a lot of things on my website. You really have to go back and, and see, what do I believe that's not in the Word? Why, why I go to church on Sunday? What, what happened to the Sabbath? Well, the Sabbath was writ, written with the finger of Yahweh, and it says in the last chapter of I. Isaiah 66, that from one Sabbath to another Sabbath, they're going to come to worship the king in Jerusalem during the millennium. And Paul, Paul said, I have to be at Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. The feasts are not done away with either. He said, Paul said, keep the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread with sincerity and truth. And it says in uh, the last chapter of Zachar Zechariah, during that thousand year period of time in the millennium, people from all nations will come to Jerusalem on a Feast of Tabernacles. See, these holidays are all by Satan to take your, your eyes off of Yeshua's real holidays. If he kept them, we need to keep them. And they're all being fulfilled in him. Born on Passover, died on Passover. And you, you can see that he was circumcised on the last day on unleavened bread. Eight days after a male child was born, he had to be circumcised. Born on Passover, he had seven days of unleavened bread. On the eighth day, he was circumcised. Incredible study when you get into it. You have to make sure that, that Satan has no legal right to be in your life. See, you can't apply the blood unless you surrender everything to Him. So many people are, are talking about the blood, the blood, the blood, but it's like in Hebrews, if you're not sold out to the Father, you start using the blood, 
It's like trampling the blood under your feet. You got to be crucified to yourself. You got to let the spirit of the Father mortify the deeds of your flesh. We're going to pray in just a little while. Remember what I'm saying. Study out these things and look at my message on the website about the origin of names. Where certain names that we used, we used to use in Christianity are really pagan, pagan roots. You got to be very careful. And just like the name Jehovah, it's a 15th century word. Jehovah in 1942, 1943, in the Hebrews Concordance means wicked. You, used, you call him Jehovah, you call him wicked. Yahweh is his name. And Yeshua is his son's name. The Y-A-H, V-E-H, Y-A-H, S-H-U-A. It's, it's the family name. There's no other name for Yeshua but Yeshua. You have to see the connection between him and the Father. And Yahshua is connected to the Father through the Yah. But let's go to the Father in prayer right now. Put your hand on the computer, uh, maybe on your, your phone. But just uh, allow the blood to touch you and heal you. But I just want you to repeat after me. Say, Father... I surrender everything to you. I turn my flesh over to you. Mortify the deeds of my flesh. Conform me to the image of Yeshua. Bring the fruit of the Spirit out of me. And Father, again, I surrender everything to you. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Spirit. Fill me to overflowing so I can help other people. I give my life to you totally. Clean me. Sanctify me. And I thank you, Father, for bringing me into your family. And now if you said that you're ready for the healing to flow to your body, to your mind, spiritually, financially, through the blood of Yeshua. Father, anybody that's listening out there, Father, that you, you want to touch, Satan, loose everybody out there in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua, disease, anything that's not a Yeshua, get away from their lives right now and don't return in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Father, I plead your blood all over them. Touch them. By your stripes they were healed. Receive your miracle. Receive this second day of Feast of Dedication miracle. Healing through the blood. Maybe healing uh, relationships. Receive that healing. Let it be made whole. The relationships, your body. Receive it right now. And email us. You can email me at my website at henrywalker.org. Under contact there's a link to email. Just click on the link. We'd just love to hear from you, a praise report, any questions you may have. And uh, don't forget, I have two books on the bottom of my message page. One is called Noon. It talks about, about the feast days, different hours of the day when Yeshua wants to move the most, and how the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Also, I have a book on, Is the Trinity Really a Mystery? Right below that, explains what the Trinity really is. Any questions you have are answered in the book. The Trinity is the Father manifests himself as the Father in the Son, as the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Father is Spirit, and there's only one Spirit, He is the Holy Spirit. The manifestations of Him. Thank you for receiving this message today. Receive your healing, and don't forget to tune in the next six days for more blessings on each day from the Feast of Dedication. And search out what I'm saying. Search the Word. Read my, my messages on a season of strange miracles on my website. Hanukkah, Feast of Dedication. And also, I, I want to remind you that on my Website at henrywalker.org. You can donate to the ministry. We feed people in the Bahamas. And if you want to help us in any other ministry course, there's a donate button right there. You will be blessed and we'll be blessed by any donation you make. So remember to next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, Greater is the Father in you than he is in the world.